Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Be careful for nothing. That word careful means be anxious for nothing. Stay tuned. Welcome to Honest News. Philippians 4 and 6. If you'd like to follow in the reading of God's Word, we're going to read this verse again. Be anxious for nothing. Be troubled for nothing. Be worried for nothing. But in everything, not some things, everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto god let's pray heavenly father we thank you for your love your mercy your goodness we thank you lord for giving us understanding of your ways understanding truth we thank you, Lord, for your power, for your strength, that we can be strengthened in this hour by your strength, that we don't need to lean on our own power or strength, but we lean on your strength, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you anoint, bless this message, and anoint and bless your people to receive it. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is the same word that was used with Mary and Martha. Martha was cumbered and troubled about many things. And Paul is saying, be not like Martha, basically. Be careful for nothing. Now, Paul talks about prayer, and he talks about supplication. But there's something I think a lot of times God's people miss. With thanksgiving. Right? How many times do we pray and we supplicate, but we forget to mix that with thanksgiving? In other words, when we go and we pray and we call on God for help, we don't come to the Lord in faith. We don't come to the Lord with a thankful heart. We come to the Lord like we're desperate, in despair. Amen? Instead of coming to the Lord with thanksgiving, knowing that he answers our prayers and knowing that he has answered our prayers in the past that we will come to him with the expectation expecting him to only do what he has done and will continue to do right the lord's not going to fail you he's not going to let you down but sometimes we treat the lord that way Amen. We come to the Lord with, in such a condition, we're distraught, we're worried, we're troubled, we're cumbered about many things, and like Martha, even serving, just troubled. 
Where is that heart of worship? Where is it? Where is that living sacrifice? We are to be a living sacrifice, to present ourselves to God as a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable, which is our reasonable service. Our lives are to be as a burning sacrifice. Paul considered himself a burnt offering. Do you consider yourself a burnt offering before the Lord? You're continually offering yourself up as a sweet smelling savor praise the lord that's the way our lives are to be amen you know the one thing that went up to heaven from the sacrifice in the old testament was the smoke amen the sacrifice didn't go up to god it was the savor of the sacrifice that went up to God. Amen? What is that savor that God is looking for? It's the sweet-smelling savor of burning flesh. What do I mean by that? That flesh nature. When God sees you putting that flesh nature, which is your enemy, which is his enemy, on the altar... He loves that smell. He loves that savor because he knows that if the flesh is on the altar, that you're going to be living in the spirit. You're going to be walking in the spirit. That's victory. Amen? But how often do we put the flesh on the altar? How often do, how often do we offer ourselves a living sacrifice? Paul goes on to say, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The peace of God that passeth all understanding. Many times we think we must understand everything. Right? But how many know that there are some things that we're never going to understand on this side of glory? Amen. You can take all your questions and your whys that you still haven't got an answer to. Amen. And you can offer those up to the Lord as a burnt offering. Amen. Paul the Apostle, he had a deep burning question for God. Amen. And the Lord simply said to him, Paul, my grace is sufficient. Three times he sought the Lord. And the Lord just said to him, my grace is sufficient, Paul. Amen. God didn't tell Paul what it was altogether that he was dealing with, even though Paul did say a messenger of Satan was sent from God, that God allowed a messenger of Satan to buffet him. But Paul still didn't understand altogether why God would allow this. And throughout time, throughout his walk with the Lord, he began to learn. God began to give him understanding. And it was that understanding and that experience that Paul received that he was able to minister to others. At the beginning, when Paul was 
beseeching the Lord at the beginning where he was asking the Lord for this thing to depart from him, he didn't understand God's ways. He didn't understand that that thorn in his flesh, that messenger Satan to keep him humble was a good thing. He didn't understand it. But how many know Paul later began to understand that when he was weak, then he was strong. He got to the place where he began to rejoice in his infirmities, knowing that the power of Christ rested upon him. Paul didn't understand that at the beginning. He didn't always understand that. That came with experience. That came through prayer and supplications as he learned to thank God and even thank God for his infirmities. Amen? Paul goes on to say, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good, report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think, on these things. Amen. Listen, folks. Where is Paul going with all this? If you follow down, you'll find that Paul the Apostle was learning something from God. He was learning. What was he learning? Take a look. Philippians chapter 4, verse 10. Paul says, But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein you were also careful. Did you hear what Paul just said? You were also careful. There were times Paul was careful where he was worried and troubled. But you lacked opportunity. Listen. Not that I speak in respect of want. For Listen, I have learned. Notice what Paul just said. I learned something. Paul says, I didn't know it all along. I learned this. And what I learned, I want to teach you. In whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. Paul learned to be content. I know both. Listen to what Paul said. I know both, I know, intimately, I know by experience both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed. Who is instructing Paul? The Holy Spirit, right? Instructed both to be full and to be hungry both to abound and to suffer need. Notice what he says next. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Did Paul say, I can do some things? I can only do those things that I choose I can do. Well, Lord, I know that you can handle this. But this, Lord, I don't know. Is there only some things the Lord can strengthen you in? There's got to be some things that you do on your own, right? I don't need your help on this, Lord. I can handle this. 
But Paul got to the place of such dependence upon the Lord. He says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. He's learning. Wouldn't you say Paul the Apostle was learning? He still hadn't learned the ultimate yet because Jesus said, I can't of my own self do nothing. He hadn't come to that place yet. Paul hadn't reached perfection. He still tried to do some things on his own. Amen? But he was reaching for it. He was pressing toward that mark. He said, not as though I'm already attained, not as though already I'm a perfect man. Right? But he was reaching for it. He was stretching for it. Jesus said, I can of my own self do nothing. Paul says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthen it. How come Paul didn't say, I can of my own self do nothing? He didn't understand that. He didn't understand the fullness. Even Paul said he had received the earnest until the fullness. In this hour, brothers and sisters, we have the opportunity to receive the fullness of Christ. Are you listening? God is pouring out the Spirit without measure in this hour, the fullness, where you and I will come to the place where, like Jesus, we can of our own selves do nothing. Amen. Praise the Lord. So Paul learned. He learned through experience he learned. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. When I am weak, did Paul say when I am weak? Then am I strong. Notice how that got switched, especially in this hour of all this teaching today, the I am movement, right? Paul started out saying, I am weak. You hear them, you'll never hear those today in the New Age movement teaching I am, the power of I am. You'll never hear them say, I am weak. There you know, it's I am rich, I am powerful, I am blessed. But you won't hear them saying, I am weak. What Paul is saying is, I am weak, I am weak. But notice when he spoke, speaks of being strong, he doesn't say I am anymore. Because now he's leaning on the I am, the great I am. He says, but when I'm strong, then am I strong. Amen. I am weak. Then am I strong. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 24. Paul is giving his testimony, things he's been through. Of the Jews five times received I 40 stripes, save one. Five times. Let this sink in. Five times received I 40 stripes, save one. Is Paul saying that five times he received 40 beatings, 40 stripes, or 39 stripes? 
five times. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck at night and a day in I have been in the deep. Listen. In journeyings often. In perils of waters. In perils of robbers. Paul had to deal with robbers in his journeyings. In perils by my own countrymen. That's got to be difficult. In perils by the heathen. In perils in the city. In perils in the wilderness. In perils in the sea. In perils among false brethren in weariness and painfulness in watchings often in hunger and thirst in fastings often in cold and nakedness Besides those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Who is weak? And I am not weak. Amen? Who is weak? And I am not weak. Who is offended? And I burn not. He still hasn't learned. I can of my own self do nothing. He still has not come to the fullness. He even said that of himself. He says not as though I had already attained. Amen. But he's headed there. And God is allowing him to go through all these things that he just described to us to get him there. To where he can do nothing of himself. You got to remember when God started out with Paul the Apostle, he was Saul and he was a man full of pride. Right? And God is whittling him down. God is breaking him down, humbling him. Where there's no self-sufficiency where he has no confidence in the flesh. Amen? If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmities. Praise the Lord. Paul says, when I'm weak, then am I strong. Praise the Lord. Paul is learning, just like you and I. But Paul did not have Paul to learn from. I may know that. We see people today saying, I would uh, tell my younger self this, or I would teach my younger self this. You don't have that opportunity. Where they even get that notion is beyond me. That they think that they could tell their younger self anything. No, that's past. They can't tell the younger self anything because the younger self is gone. Right? That's an illusion. That's an, a, a vain imagination. But what you can do is you can learn from others' mistakes what not to do and what to do. And Paul could not learn from the wisdom or from the experiences that he went through as far as 
the way you and I can learn from Paul. I like what I heard one time, and it really stuck with me. Maybe it'll help you. If I can learn from a man what it took him a lifetime to learn, and I can learn it in a few minutes by listening to his words of wisdom, then I'm going to listen. Amen? We have a man here, Paul the Apostle, a great man of God, an apostle of Jesus Christ that learned some things. We do well to take heed and learn. Amen. And better than that, one greater than Solomon, Jesus Christ, we can learn from him that he's meek and lowly in heart and find rest unto our souls. Jesus said these words, and we really need to let these words purge us. Jesus said, I can of my own self do nothing. You that can receive it, receive it. I can of my own self do nothing. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens I think I'm going to choose what Jesus said I can't have my own self do nothing praise the Lord glory to God we see these different men of God we see these different apostles learning through their experiences learning what Jesus had already taught Are you listening? I can of my own self do absolutely nothing. And Jesus says to you and I, apart from me, you can do nothing as the branch that must abide in the vine. If you do not abide in Jesus Christ, you can do nothing. You can produce nothing. Amen. No, no good fruits going to come from that if you don't abide in him. Praise the Lord. We need the life of God that flows through the vine, from the vine, thro- thro- flows through the vine into the branches. And that life of God will produce good fruit. Amen? Abundance of fruit. Fruit that will bring glory to the Father. Hallelujah. And that our fruit may remain. That our Heavenly Father may be glorified. Praise the Lord. We can of our own selves do nothing. But we keep trying to. Amen? Boy, I tell you, brothers and sisters, if I could live like I preach, (laughs) hallelujah. I told you about my pastor when he was in Bible school. He says he saw one of the teachers that he said was the caliber of Elijah out raking the leaves. He walked up to him and he says, what doest thou here, Elijah? And uh, the man of God turned around and said to my pastor, he says, you know, Brother Reynolds, God's people have learned how to preach under the anointing, but they haven't learned how to live under the anointing. Amen. Praise the Lord. I tell you, brothers and sisters, uh, to let the Holy Spirit flow through you and like we do here, to preach the gospel, that's easy comparing to allowing him to flow through us in our everyday life. That tells me there's got to be some more purging 
Jesus said, you are clean through the word which I've spoken unto you. Can we receive that truth of his word to cut away the flesh? I can of my own self do nothing. Let that truth make us free. Do we believe it? Do we believe the truth that without the Lord we can do nothing? Amen? Or are we just going to keep trying? Keep depending on our own strength. Leaning on our own understanding. We, we are very stubborn people. We are very uh, stubborn and we seem to have a abstinence. Of, or, or, I think that's the right word. We just seem to be so hard-headed. I can do it. I can do it. Amen? But you can't. The simple truth is you can do nothing of yourself. Praise the Lord. In fact, the scripture says man at his best is vanity. Man at his best. I've said this before. The greatest achievements that man has accomplished in this world throughout history is vain. That's right. Man at his best is vanity. They look at their, this idea that they've walked on the moon, they're going back to the moon, they're going to Mars. They look at these as, as achievements. Or Elon Musk making a rocket come back to the earth and landing on a, on a pad. I mean, hey, when you think about technology and you think about man building something, that's quite an achievement. But when you try to compare that to The miracles of God? Amen. Listen, folks. Elon Musk, he can't make the lame man walk. He can't open the blinded eyes, the deaf ears. Amen. Elon Musk can't raise the dead. He's the one that's talking about putting a chip in people's brains. Amen. On the cautionary side, he's one of the ones that says we've got to be careful AI doesn't overtake the human race. But he still thinks by putting a chip in a human brain that he's going to somehow help the situation. I'm here to tell you, brothers and sisters, only God can work a miracle. And that everything else falls short of. Man cannot work miracles. I hear uh, Bill Gates saying that vaccinations are miracles. Yeah. Giving shots to little children full of poison is a miracle. That's a miracle, he says. Man cannot work a miracle. And yet they call what they can accomplish miracles. They even got a mayonnaise out called Miracle Whip. But there's only one that can work miracles. And because of that, everything man can accomplish is vanity. It falls short of God's glory. Man can't multiply the fishes and the loaves. Amen? Man can't walk on the water. Praise the Lord, people. Man can't take some dirt from the ground and spit in it and make clay and stick it on a man's eyes so that he might see. Amen? 
Man cannot do what only God can do. They should have known who Jesus was just by the miracles that he did. And yet I tell you, they did know. Jesus looked on the Pharisees. He said, you know who I am. Hmm. Can you imagine? God Almighty. Praise the Lord. Those eyes of flame of fire. You know who I am. Hmm. They, they are snakes. They are serpents. Demon possessed of their father, the devil. He said, you know who I am. Amen. That's why they wanted him dead. And the scripture says that doesn't go away. In this hour, they're going to try to make war with the Lamb of God. Amen. An antichrist spirit is rising in the land. Hate God. They hate God. Yes, they do. They hate him. Synagogue of Satan, they hate him. They hate the New Testament because it's a book full. It's books that are full of miracles. Miracles that they cannot explain. Miracles that they cannot understand. Their finite minds, their carnal minds, they can't grasp how it is that Peter could say, silver and gold have I none, but such as I do have, give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. They hate they hate the New Testament. And they hate the Christ of the New Testament. Amen. They do. They hate him. Instead of being thankful for his miracle working power, they envy him. They envy him. They want to have the power. They want to be the ones that are him. And they will never be him. Amen. Praise his name. The world hates God. They hate Christ. And they will hate us as we allow the Lord to work miracles through our lives. Just being born again, just being saved is a miracle. They hate us for that. Amen? It's not something that man can understand or explain. They hate things they can't understand. Amen? Man does not like to be confronted with something he cannot understand intellectually. He hates that. And that's what Jesus was dealing with with Nicodemus. Nicodemus really thought he knew something. Jesus said to him, you don't even understand physical things. How are you going to understand spiritual things? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can you see Nicodemus trying to figure out the born again experience? You mean I got to enter into my mother's womb a second time? Boy, you're real intelligent, Nicodemus. <clears throat> Sounds like something our president would say. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. Man is vanity. Man at his best is vanity. 
foolishness. The foolishness of God is wiser than men. The foolishness of God is wiser than the wisdom of men. Amen. That doesn't mean God's foolish. What it means is the things that man considers to be foolish. What God does, we look in the Old Testament, we see all these things that God did that you wouldn't think would have brought the victory. Like lanterns. (laughs) Breaking some lanterns. And the light shining out from the lanterns with Gideon. Just over and over. David overcoming Goliath. Amen. Look at the victories and the miracles God worked through the mighty men of David. Look what God did through Samson. These are not things that man can understand. So they try to paint Samson as this great, strong, galactic man. Right? Listen to me, brothers and sisters. They hate God because they don't understand him. And they never will. They never will be able to comprehend and understand with their finite minds. The natural man cannot understand the things which are spiritual, for they are spiritually discerned. Neither can he know them. Amen. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. That's why the scripture says that you and I must be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Hallelujah. There's got to be a change, a transformation. There's got to be got to be and got to be a change just like god changed abram to abraham changed sarai to sarah sarai means contentious and sarah means princess amen god transformed abram to abraham how did he do it he said walk thou before me abram and be thou perfect that was it He spoke the word, just like he spoke the worlds into existence. God said, Abram, walk thou before me, be perfect. That was it. From that point on, Abram was Abraham, and Abraham walked before God and was perfect. How? It's not by might. It's not by power. But it's by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. God looks down on planet earth and he sees man in their toil. He sees toiling. And he sees very few abiding in him. Resting from their labors. Entering into his rest. Sadly. As I'm closing, are you one of those that's still toiling? Or have you learned how to grow in grace? Have you learned how to abide in him? Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Consider the lily. They don't toil nor spin. There's not a king with more splendor than them. Amen. Not a king, not even even Solomon. And we have a heavenly Father above with eyes full of mercy and a heart filled with love. And he really cares when your head is bowed low. 
Consider the lilies, and then you will know. May I introduce you to this friend of mine? Hangs out the stars, tells the sun when to shine. And he really cares when your head is bowed low. Consider the lilies, and then you will know.